Hey, you guys, it's Jaffe. Oh my god, long time, right? What do you do, man? We've just been slammed and swamped with, uh, with the game. And, uh, you know, I'm so happy to be back to blogging. You know, I, I love blogging so much. I've, you know, people are like, oh, why don't you blog some more? I'm just like, uh, I've just been too busy to do it. And we're still really busy, but, uh, uh, you know, a little, a little bit, of, a little bit of coming up from air now. Uh, I got a shite ton of emails. I got to write today. Uh, <clears throat> Scott and I and Kellen were on the phone yesterday doing kind of the last minute twisted metal. Uh, it's kind of like the doors are fucking. You know, the, the image that comes to mind if you've ever seen War Games. I don't. This is obscure, but like when that big door closes at the beginning and that huge iron door uh, in the mountain. You know, where like all the generals and presidents and stuff go. You know, and there's going to be a nuke attack, and it's like you know what, 20 feet of mega steel. So in the movie, the door kind of closes and this woman kind of, or this general kind of sleeps, seeps in at the last moment. What am I talking about? I don't know. But, you know, what I'm saying is the point is we had a big meeting, really long phone calls. Sorry, my nose is the fucking spring pollen, which is great. Spring is back. Um, yeah, so long meeting, long phone meeting, and uh, a lot of final design issues kind of getting, you know, concretized, if that's a word, I think it is. And uh, I just got to kind of recap the emails today. And uh, what, what can I tell you about what we're looking at? Um, can I talk to you guys? I, you know, I probably can. You know, I mean, I, I'll give you an example, right? I mean, th this is something that we're still working on. So this is not set in stone, but I, I, this is not like giving away some big, you know, Sony mandated. This is, you know, don't reveal this PR piece. It's just more design philosophy. So, you know, as you guys know, we announced at E3, we have a death match and a team death match component. And, you know, we have, uh, we have ranked games and unranked games. And the unranked games, you know, will have variations. <clears throat> at, uh, at E3, I think we did something we were calling carnage mode, which I still think we're calling carnage mode, uh, which is kind of just like damage points, right? So you, uh, you, you damage your enemy and every bullet you hit your enemy, you know, calculates up damage either for your team or, or for your uh, your individual if you're playing one on one or not or you know one versus 15 others and that's a great mode really fun and the reason that actually came to life my understanding I didn't work on twisted metal black head on or not head on twisted metal black online um, but uh, was because there was all this kind of what we were calling kill stealing where you know somebody would get somebody down into the red uh, and somebody would zoom in and take the kill and it was really frustrating and so when you do it with damage you really are being rewarded for the actual damage you do. The problem uh, that some of us have, I certainly have, I know Scott and I are both in sync on this and Kellen, um, that you end up with this situation that it, the, the, the value of life or kills, which is such a, a staple of the shooter diet, certainly the Twisted Metal Classic diet, that gets devalued. Even if you kind of put a bonus, you know, the higher bonus you put on a kill in a damage game, follow me here, I know this might be a little, you know, not complicated, but, you know, obtuse. Um, which is not the same as complicated, is it? Um, anyway, the point is, uh, you, you can put it either, you know, if, if, if I am playing a damage game and then I say, okay, there's 100 points extra for killing, well, in order for that, those damage points to be valuable enough for it to matter and feel like, feel like kills still matter, suddenly you end up with the same problem. That is, if it's 100 points, which is a good bounty, then kill stealing rears its head even in a damage game. And so, we were trying to figure out, you know, well, how do we do a kills-based game that allows um, us to also counter kill stealing? And so we're working on that, and, and that's for, so that's the example. And obviously, you know, we're talking about, you know, duh, kill assist and stuff, but it's different than in a game like Call of Duty where you've got a human character that dies after a couple of shots, or Team Fortress 2 where you can do kill assist. You know, when we're, when you're talking about uh, a vehicle that has a long health bar that could stay alive, you know, in a firefight, depending on shielding and evasion and whatnot, uh, ducking behind a corner, going into a building, uh, which I guess is evasion, uh, as well, you know, for a minute, two, three minutes, uh, and you can collect health, and all, there's all these other sort of modifiers that kind of make kill assist and calculating the points of a kill, like in Call of Duty, where I, my understanding, I've only gotten either 100 points for the kill or 50 for the assist. The point is, that's the kind of shit we're wrapping up. So uh, there's probably 30 of those kind of final design decisions that we're in the process of making. We had a great phone call yesterday. I got to type it all up today. That's my point. Wow, fucking four minutes. I got to zoom through shit. Uh, what else is up? Uh, man, that should be my whole thing, right? Twisted Metal Info. Let's just talk Twisted for a minute. 
Uh, I know some of you guys are bitching like, whoa, where's my Twisted Metal info, Jaffa? You promised a big shit storm of info at the beginning of the year. We're coming. We really are. It's not, the, the game is 2011. The game is going great. Oh man, you guys should see this level the team is working on um, right now. I just, it's so great to start seeing those final elements coming in there. Really great Twisted Metal-y stuff. Um, just great. But, you know, as I mentioned in a blog post below, so I won't repeat it too much, but you know, we, we, we're, we're doing an event pretty soon. We're going to show the game pretty soon. We just didn't want to get crowded in with the GDC. I mean, when you look at those amazing kind of like Frostbite 2 engine uh, you know, uh, Battlefield 3 stuff, or you're talking about brand new handhelds or brand, you know, Dave Perry's, uh, uh, I forget what it's called, his company, where he's kind of doing cloud-based gaming that everybody was raving about at GDC. For us, we're kind of like, let's make some space. So when we kind of go out to the world and the fans and the press, hopefully if they come to cover our game, uh, you know, they're able to work with us to really kind of go, okay, this is what Eat, Sleep, Play, and Sony thinks is special about their game. And if we agree, we're able to give them some breathing room in terms of, you know, the, the time to really spin with that game to sort of understand and, and report on that. And it's so hard, you know, when you're sandwiched in between a gajillion other events, especially when they're like, you know, megaton events like the announcement of the iPad 2. You know, uh, you know we, we could be making uh, God of War meets Gears of War meets Mario and, you know, meets Twisted Metal uh, meets Minecraft, and we'd still get kind of blown out of the water press-wise by a new hardware announce. That's just kind of the way it is. So anyway, that's what's up with that. But very, very soon, I promise, we're not stringing you guys who really want info along. We get it. It's just, you know, we, we want to be a little bit more uh, careful about how we put the info out there and when we do uh, to make sure it gets the most amplification. Um, God, I have, you know, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. I have some other stuff I want to talk about on my uh, GDC speech because when I got back in town... I saw some comments that I thought were pretty good and that, I mean, the high concept is that, um, you know, I, I don't try. I think I do, I don't even try. It's not conscious. I, I'm a, I think I, I, I think I still, even given, you know, what I do for a living, I consider myself a, a genuine gamer. I'm medium to hardcore. I'm certainly not super hardcore, but I game, I buy games, I play games all the time. Um, but I do think, you know, I do think because I have so much access to games, whether it's Sony saying, hey, you know, you know, you know, you're working with us, you've worked for us for a while, here's a bunch of free games, or check out these new games we haven't shipped, or friends in the industry send me games, or I'm able to expense a number of the games that I buy back to eat, sleep, play. Um, you know, all those things add up to the fact that I have more games probably than most people. So it, it, it's really important, I think, for us in the industry not to develop sort of an elitist, I don't mean elitist like we're better, but elitist in the sense of, um, maybe that's not even the right word, um, uh, a vantage point of the player's mentality that is incorrect. Because when I gave that speech at GDC talking about, oh, all the load times and install times and, uh, you know, all that's true, by the way. I fucking hate that stuff. And the reason I'm playing more portable is because it's just quicker instant gratification. And I think there are things as developers and hardware creators that should be being done to make the user experience better. There's no doubt. But at the same time, I don't think I was taking into account the fact that, you know, an average person might only have one game at a time they're really focused on. And they work all day, not in games, playing games for research, whatever. And when they get home, it doesn't really bother them to sit up and spend 30 seconds to eight minutes getting ready to be immersed in this amazing experience. And so I, I think I should have, been, you know, included that perspective in my speech while still, you know, hammering at some of the things that I feel are uh, should be being done to make the user experience better. So I, I, I was I was grateful to sort of have some insight and learn about that and sort of, you know, grow my mind about this issue uh, when I got home. I don't know. What else, man? I got a dog. You guys see my dog? Come here, Austin. Come here. Come say hi. He's, he's, a, he's five. We got him from the rescue. He's awesome. There he is. Austin. Hey, buddy. Come here. Come here. Okay, I'm going to... Come here. He's the best dog ever, ever. Look at this guy. Come here. Look at these people. Come here. Can I get you? That's everybody. Look, they they pay for the games. They buy your dog food. Say thank you, thank you. No, okay. What a good. This guy's so awesome. So oh yeah, there he is. If I can, there, look at the back leg. See that? You do that, his back leg starts going. I don't know why. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, point is, awesome dog. Love this guy. My kids love him. And, you know, I'm about at the end of the 10 minutes. I got so much stuff to tell you guys. It's been so long. I, I apologize for being away. I'll try to do another video uh, this week when I get a minute. Um, I got tons of emails. I got tons to do today and this week. But I will definitely talk to you soon. I want to talk about Kanye West's new album. 
I want to talk about uh, divorced moms. Amazing insight. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, I got to go. Bye.